Getting in the groove. Welcome back, everybody, to a beautiful sunny Friday here in Berlin, Germany. The landscape in my mind is also bright. I can see the grid. It's in white. The sea is still there, but it's kind of underneath the grid. Maybe they're juxtaposed. Not sure. I have no internet, by the way. We're going by phone. Artist Journal, May 17th, 2024. Broadcasting on a smooth, sunny day in inner space. My name's Adrian Pocabelli, and welcome to the show. As I was saying, I, I have no internet for three days, if you can believe that. Uh, so I went to a coffee shop to get these tabs ready. So, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to get Starlink. I think I'm at that point. Again, for me to upload this show, it takes an hour in Berlin. Like, it, it's kind of, as far as I understand, it's well known there's slow upload speeds and download. It's something like 24 kilobytes per second. Feel free to correct me if anybody uh, knows otherwise, but it is slow. And now it's not even working, so maybe that is my opportunity uh, to, I think I'm going to try Starlink. I think, you know, I looked it up about two months ago, and it's something like, I think 400 euros, let's call it 500 US dollars, not even, $450 for the box if you buy it. And I think as little as like 60 euros a month. And it's like, if I can upload this show in like a minute, uh, that just may pay for itself with the extra time. Then I could upload to Zora without thinking about it. And maybe that would even just pay for the show or for the internet. So all to say, uh, welcome back. And I hope you're as thrilled as I am that it's Friday. Uh, I am very thrilled. And it was good to get out of the house, actually, early. It was kind of nice to change up the routine. Anyways, uh, let's begin. Andre Olivero Saboda. Uh, let me make sure I'm pronouncing that right. Andre Olivera Cibola. Cibola. Mannequin. Cool title. Uh, B-I-I-D. Not sure what that is. Build? Mannequin build? Not sure. Build in German, just so you know, B-I-L-D, there's actually a tabloid called Build. That means image. Das Bild, the image. Which So it's kind of an interesting, important word if you're in the arts uh, to know at least that word in German, let's say. Das Bild. Pretty sure it's Das. Uh, so, kind of a, it's like the Sun. A tabloid newspaper, uh, just so you know. Um, okay, so here, just kind of a fun one. To start us off here, a combination of, I think, generative art, let's see, 3D scanning work with cell phones. Interesting, I think uh, Score was mentioning doing 3D scanning with a cell phone, if I'm not mistaken. And generative art. In this process, I scan one of those articulated wooded, wood, wooden mannequins used in... Uh, art processes for reference poses. After the scan, the 3D object generated is reinterpreted through creative coding with the Java language. So a little bit of coding. And you know what I like about this is first it kind of dazzles the eyes, but what I also like about it, it it's sophisticated in it's using different processes. It's kind of novel. It's kind of different, right? With the grid around it. And I also like the accessibility. I don't think you need to have a PhD in art history to like this one. I think you can be six years old and really just enjoy the color, recognize it for what it is, which is a body, in this case, a wooden mannequin, within this space, and then just kind of digitalized, pixelated in this beautiful kind of generative art, kind of leaky feedback, shall we say, for lack of a better term, in this flashing green and black cube with a gray background. So just a cool one on a uh, foundation on the homepage as Andre was tweeting out, which is how I saw that, you know, so it's just kind of a, a lesson in uh, when you have good news, uh, turn it into something, <laughs> you know, like make PR out of it. It's kind of worth it because then that feeds back on itself and it kind of amplifies it. So kind of a fun uh, thing there. This is on base uh, 0.033. So pretty reasonable price. I think that's like $10, if I'm not mistaken, uh, plus a little fee. And so, yeah, so very cool. And two of, 33, two of 33 minted. This is on base, which, again, continues to be very popular. So, again, if you're looking for it, Andre Oliveira Cibola. 
cool work, uh, just an original work there on, and I think if you go to the uh, homepage of Foundation, you'll find it. Uh, continuing on, uh, Clown Vamp. So, very interesting. You know, I uh, sometimes I do these shows and I just kind of hope that people are going to be able to speak about whatever topic. And, you know, I was like, you know, Clown Vamp, can you speak on what's going on in AI? Because you don't, you're not necessarily going to keep up with everything. Uh, and Clown Vamp's like, yeah, no problem. Happy. I'm, I'm thinking about this all the time. And so here, if you are looking for a catch up on AI, and I guess we'd say like visual AI, you know, it's kind of focused mostly on AI, you know, even 3D modeling tools, upscalers, which I'm finding very interesting. This whole upscaling thing. It's like a remix through scale. I love simple ideas. I, I adore. And so this idea of you can remix by upscaling and how contrary to where we were even five years ago, I'd argue, but especially 20 or 10 when the big, there, it would seem like an impossible task that you'd ever get an image bigger than, you know, its original dimensions without it getting kind of JPEG artifacts and everything. Here, in, instead of it getting worse, you could argue by upscaling, you could potentially uh, make an image better. Like, that's a paradigm shift. So, uh, so all to say, uh, this is a fascinating hour and 18 minutes of, uh, I would say, nonstop enthusiastic discussion with Clown Vamp, RuneTune, and myself. And so check it out. Uh, I highly recommend it. I need to give it another listen. Uh, I do plan to put the shows on Spotify. One th first, I need my internet to work, though. So first things first. Uh, but I do plan on doing a big update there uh, for everybody that's been on the show. It what a what a reservoir of information because uh, I don't think I've uploaded since October November. So and I have all those shows ready to go. Uh, let's continue. Yolantis uh, t discussing the Clown Vamp. Appearance. After hearing a conversation between Clown Vamp, Pokebelly, and Rune Tune, I recorded a 10 minute show to tell of my mid journey smart folders reflecting on image coherence and mint frequency. One of the questions I asked Clown Vamp was How do you archive your images? Because if anybody who's made AI artwork knows, you kind of have a lot of images. I mean, amazingly, Clown Vamp saves, he was saying, 50 to 60% of the images are saved. I think. Uh, and I was, what do you use? Dropbox. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Uh, so here, Yolantis, I'll have to give, once my internet is working and it doesn't cost me $2 of phone data to watch this YouTube video, I will chat about my own mid-journey images. So I actually can't wait. That is bookmarked. I can't wait to check that out. Also, Clown Vamp, releasing this right before the show. Interesting thought. Real images is a funny concept, and we went actually into depth on this. Uh, RuneTune asked, no wide-angle lenses, no post-processing, no flash, Photoshop? In a sense, Clown Vamp is questioning, questioning the idea of w what exactly is a real image. Uh, do they only come from the real region of France? How much intermediation is okay? Uh, if not a mirrorless camera, is it too much mechanical intervention? But wait, our eyes are only processing light signals and building a visual of that. Oh, in a sense, we might call this what I would be tempted to call off the top of my head with coffee coursing through my veins, the relativity of perception, the relativity of appearance, you know, and it kind of, uh, uh, Again, it kind of evokes a little bit uh, Plato to a certain degree. The world of becoming, right? In a sense, this stuff isn't stable. And to Clown Vamp's point, you may think uh, something is quote unquote realistic, because, but really your eyes are just another kind of post-processing you know, of a certain kind or processing mechanism that might be different from a bee. And who's to say you know, what the reality is? So, uh, you know, because oftentimes, and I think the reason Clown Vamp is bringing this up is because AI is getting uh, distinguished, one might say, from quote-unquote real images, right? Interesting. Now, it does seem to relate uh, the real uh, 
we're almost back to this idea of the, I, I think you pronounce it the referent, right? Uh, you know, like the question is, like very quickly, if we're to unpack this a little bit, the real image, let's say a photograph, let's call it a copy using light of external reality. We'll just loosely call it that. It's a mimes- the first copy. Whereas with AI, we don't have, it, we're back to this idea of the hyper real, aren't we? We don't have a referent, right? And that is, and if we had more time and more data, and we will go back into this. We have to review all this. But that is, as far as I remember, and we've gone through it a few times here, the definition of the hyperreal is there is no referent. There is no reality that is being pointed to, right? And I would argue that is the difference. So now, which is quote unquote more real? Uh, yeah, open question. Depends how you define real is, I guess, what I would say. Which is closer to reality? I think you could still argue that the photograph is closer uh, because it still has a referent. Um, But we're getting technical here. And I think the important thing here is the provocation in this question here by Clown Vamp. And I'm sure there are many answers uh, to what I'm bringing up here, including one from Danielle King. Danielle King, am rereading, uh, how do you, is it Henri Berger? We, this is, I think, turn of the century, philosoph- French philosopher, ways of seeing. Shall we just quickly look? Berger, is, I think it's Henri. Uh, I've read a little bit, if I remember. Is it, no, it's John Berger. Okay, I'm thinking of someone completely different. I'm thinking of someone from the turn of the century. This is someone completely different. Interesting. I'm rereading Berger's, Berger, Ber, Berger's way of seeing right now, and this quote comes to mind. The ph- photographer's way of seeing is reflected in their choice of subject. The painter's way of seeing is reconstituted by the marks they make on the canvas or paper. And it kind of brings us back also to that discussion we were having on uh, the inner logic of impossible images. The way the, the creative process, again... With photography, you could argue it. there is an integral link of this mimesis, this copy of the so-called real or external world, whereas with image making and art and drawing and painting, uh, arguably, I don't think you have to have that referent. You can kind of start with marks on a page. In a sense, you're creating your own referent by creating something in the external world. So not sure where that leaves us here, Uh, but in the name of time, shall we continue? So thank you everybody for the comments uh, on last episode with that brilliant work by Machine. Ed Marola, love the initial thought, let's create. Exactly, the advice to my younger self, stop thinking and do. Uh, And I do think of Ed Marola in that respect, you can totally tell Uh, from Ed's work, and it pays off. It's a great philosophy, creative philosophy to have. It took me a long time to get to that. Human Boy, who we're going to see, wait till you see, wait till you see where Human, like what Human Boy has done now. Remember the 330,000 views? Well, that has been utterly eclipsed. We're at like 800 and some with the latest image, like a show later. Uh, walk. Uh, let's see Human Boy, what Human Boy has to say here. Before we look at Human Boy's work, Walk, Chansey reference, is a Pokemon, Pokemon card. So that's what those are. Thank you for featuring my work, artwork in today's episode. Really appreciate it. I'm really enjoying working on this series and just finished another while watching today's episode. Brilliant. I'll make sure to share in the community. Awesome. I've always found these episodes a great way to keep me in the art making zone. I'm very pleased to hear that because when I started this show, I was concerned that people were making less art and just kind of, you know, watching more video. So that's great to hear that it's actually having a positive effect on the creative making uh, process. Cal Flemmer, I love the idea of painting a white border on an orange piece of paper just to mess with the viewer. Yes, uh, I'm glad you enjoy that. I'm proud of that one. It's kind of a fun way of being. It's kind of prankster-esque, right? And it's kind of like... 
you know, I kind of love it. There's humor in it, actually. So I'm glad you enjoy that, Kyle. Great to hear from you. And Human Boy and Ed, awesome. Tornado Rodriguez, another day, another journal. Awesome to hear from you. Boo, great to hear from you. Rad art, indeed. Indeed. Nika Barr, love that you do this. Well, thank you, and thank you for watching. Kurt Hustle Collective, Recycling the Lemons, and that brilliant work there. And thank you for sending me one. Actually, Kurt Hustle Collective, KHC on Object Yacht. You're important for the community. Keep doing that, Poco. Well, I appreciate that, and I'm glad you feel that way. And it's nice to know, you know, again, I, that this doesn't fall on deaf ears or that people care. So I appreciate that, Yacht. Uh, a walk, thank you. Uh, my pleasure. Two masterpieces by Walk last show, if you never saw that last show. The late Lady Die or Princess Die, I can't remember. That was brilliant. And the uh, Carvaggio remix. Brain Dead, great to hear from you. Ilya, awesome to hear from you. Mika, Oladef, awesome. Who makes all those awesome glitch works, dark space machine. And here's Cedar Plank, the elusive Cedar Plank. Thank you, Bet Poco. All the best to you. How did I miss that? Thank you, Cedar. Always great to hear from you. Uh, what a wonderful uh, world where, where Cedar Plank is commenting on your show. So always wonderful to hear from you. Uh, brilliant. Uh, okay, OXDK, thank you for the advice, Adrian. Just go. I'm, yeah, awesome. I'm glad it's resonating. I wish I'd heard that, you know, when I was 20 years old. Ruslan Vyeltsev, the preview. Actually, we're going to look at a work in the community uh, by R Ruslan. So really cool work there. Denise Sanchez, I think we have a work by you this episode too. Great to hear from you. PP, awesome to hear from you. Brilliant work. Uh, Bosque Gracias, what an amazing show full of ideas and transparent view of art. Thank you so much. My absolute pleasure, Bosque. See you in Berlin. Let me know when you come. I love the faces that you make while talking about or pausing between uh, between talking about the Kujib piece, Pokebelly. Well, it comes naturally. Cakes, uh, awesome to hear from you. Martin Bruce, awesome. And Underworld, first piece is fire. Would love a review of my drop this week. Feel free uh, to post uh, one in particular, uh, especially uh, in the community. Uh, put your favorite in there, and we'll take a nice close look there. Uh, so great to hear from you. And speaking of the community, look who it is, Blue281. Awesome. In the community, the super interesting and original, kind of looks like black and white, bitmap-esque. Imagine this uh, screen printed, for example. Another thing you could do is, like, again, I keep thinking, what, you, what I love about simple images, and by simple I mean low file size uh, in this case, uh, is first of all the how easy how much easier it is to say make it physical. Another thing, uh, this might not be a big file in the sense that maybe Bitcoin, uh, Blue Two Eighty One, put a series on Bitcoin. You would not believe. Uh, let's bring up the mempool, my friends. Here's some alpha. So here's your reward for watching this show. I saw it at the lowest I've ever seen the fees at ten. Uh, at 10 this morning, 13 is super low, and that's high priority. Don't tell anybody, just your artist friends. The fees are incredibly low on Bitcoin right now. Mint while you can, because if this price takes off and the bull market kind of creeps back up, uh, this may be it. Uh, you always got to treat it like this is your last chance, you know, uh, so... Really great opportunity uh, on Bitcoin right now to mint your work at a reasonable price or inscribe, as the ordinal folks say. Uh, also, let's just take a quick look at everybody else in the community here. If the phone data will work, uh, Hitsuono, literally me, is a, literally me is a game about exploration and creation in a typographic world. Hope you like it. So how wild is this? Uh, I'll take, so kind of a game. So Hitsuono, uh, pretty interesting. A, a poem here, kind of a programming poem. Kind of feels inevitable, doesn't it, uh, that programming and poetry should fuse, especially by the poets. You know, you could just imagine, couldn't you? You know, the poet, who is, who, you know, how do you make poetry relevant and interesting in the 21st century? Uh, you probably have a co someone who knows programming, and then you actually are making... Uh, you know, incorporating even code into your poetry. Otherwise, I don't know how. 
Uh, Sanro, great to hear from you. Uh, very cool kind of bitmap photo, uh, human boy. And we're going to look at this in just a second. This is the work. Wait till you see, uh, just leave you in suspense a minute or two more here. Kells for the culture. And we'll bring that up. That looks like the Tezpool there. And another beautiful work uh, by, love these pieces, uh, HB, and so does the crowd. Uh, the great crowd out there, so does the world, I should say. John Cates, the golden cross appears between our antlers. So just another nice glitch piece. This looks like the glitch that John was doing with the horse, uh, which I adore. And here's Ruslan Vyeltsev, GM everyone, here is Blasters. So I love this uh, these art PFPs, profile picture uh, projects. I love it. This is like, I think this is really cool. Like we saw that with Gogo Lightus also. So Kurt Hustle Collective, awesome. And I think uh, I like to note the date of the Heidi thing each year is in relation to Swifts by Ted Hughes. 20, I felt I saw hardly any Swifts at all. So not exactly sure. Uh, and we, this we saw last episode. So here's the work posted by Kells. And Kells mentioned there was a work posted by Kells or an image that was not by Kells, that photo with the uh, special uh, coloring. I thought it was. That was a mistake. The artist currently known as Tezephus, so kind of a Sisyphus. Cool. Looks like Object 98. It's a nice, uh, it's a nice tool. Albert Camus. <laughs> awesome. Shout out to Kells. Great to hear from you. Uh, catch a cat. Katya Kazakina, look at this. Uh, so surrealist painting in a tough market, uh, $28 million for this Leonara, Leonara, Leonara Carrington at Sotheby's, a surrealist artist. I don't know if she was, I kind of want to say she was married to Max Ernst, Lenora Carrington, but I'm not exactly sure. But I've, I, I, all to say though, uh, a great surrealist painter in her own right. And uh, here is, I think, uh, the bidder. And it was like classic. It was a bidding war. So I think it was only, last time it went for 475000 And so I don't know what the estimate was, but this was a classic bidding war. And it just goes to show, even in an, a market that's kind of, uh, the, the especially, you know what I think? The contemporary art market is actually what's really cooling off. If you have something that's kind of of more historical value, so to speak, or more proven over time, even like old masters or especially the surrealists, I have a feeling those haven't gone down. I think the market's getting more selective and it's starting to just be a little bit safer. We see that in the regular uh, financial markets as well as in uh, NFT kind of art scene. It's kind of like these safer plays. Uh, the market's gotten more selective. Could be healthy, right? Like if all of a sudden, you know, random contemporary art that maybe isn't worth, you know, half a million dollars and whatever, maybe it's good if that kind of gets brought back down to earth and, you know, you come back to real valuations again. Just on, ta it's like, look at Tezos. It's not like works aren't selling. The market is resilient, uh, so all to say, a uh, pretty interesting work and that is the work. And yeah, this guy tried to bid, I was the underbidder 30 years ago for this picture and I didn't want to miss it this time. It said Eduardo Consti Constantini, who prevailed in a 10 minute bidding war for Leonardo, Car for Lenora Carrington at Sotheby's. Uh, so it just goes to show, you know, if two people want it, uh, it can get, uh, you know, a price can go anywhere. I think of Legojo when we were bidding on that uh, Hestrubal waffle piece, which, you know, most Hestrubal waffles were going for like 100 Tezos at the time. Uh, and we bid it all the way up to 750. I was ready to keep going too. I, I, I Yeah, and that's why I don't have my Bitcoin anymore. Not for that one specifically, but for that mentality. Uh, when you get into the fever of collecting, it's, uh, yeah, watch out. Uh, continuing on, unknown collector, hot take. Indiv this is interesting. I actually have a much different view on this, uh, but let's bring in the hot take. Individual pieces of digital art will be a lot less important artistically in the future than we are used to, than we are used to it from the past for artworks. I think actually the exact opposite. Shout out to unknown collector, though. I, I love you, C. And uh, so in the spirit of just good conversation, but I've actually commented many times, uh, just on the spaces, whenever, that I feel like the digital art market is different, where 
it's not as based on series and it's actually much more based on individual works. So, but a di completely different take here from Unknown Collector. Let's see what uh, UC says. Series of works will matter much more. We already see that development for years now with the camera. There are photos that stand for themselves, but a lot can only live and show their artistic value inside a series of works. Interesting. Now photos, I'm, yeah, I'm not, definitely not an expert on. Same for generative art. Interestingly. Uh, yeah, for generative art, I could see this being true. And even for photography. I think, you know what, uh, digital art specifically though, like I think people can get lucky. I think it happens. I think people can get lucky where they make a kind of a really cool pixel artwork. Uh, you know, it's sort of like the rainbow cat and everything. And I think that artist has made a lot of good stuff before, but there is a can be luck involved and where you just kind of put together and it becomes like a meme thing. I, uh, and that person doesn't necessarily, and I'm not talking about the, I think it's the Neiman cat or something like that. Uh, I'm not talking about that person spe specifically, but I think people can get lucky and where they just kind of have the right circumstances, kind of have their funny thing, and then all of a sudden they make a great work. Uh, you can get lucky with art, I would argue. And I think, yeah, so let's continue here. Now with AI, let's say raw or close to raw image AI, a single piece does close to nothing. With uh, interesting, you need to show your vision and narrative in a series for them to have any relevance. Yeah, I think that's generally true. It's an interesting question. Again, I always think of what I loosely call the masterpiece here. Uh, Strange Things, uh, Thug Lord. Like if Strange Thing had never made another great work, would that work retain its value? It's an interesting question. Maybe not as much as it might have now. Uh, just, you know, so, it, you know, so I take the point. And I, I have to say, like, within these contexts, I kind of, I do tend, I would say I agree. The, fric the friction to create a single work will just get lower and lower. In the future, you will probably be able to create everything with AI from 3D to games and more without much technical knowledge. So the artistic vision and ideas will stand out. What do you think? You know, really interesting, again, in the clown vamp uh, spaces that we had, this idea of coherence. This is what the AI people are calling, uh, what loosely call the AI people are calling the uh, ability to uh, to uh, create a work, uh, pers make a persuasive work. They call it coherence. It's like, okay, we've we've solved for coherence, is what Clown Vamp was saying. We know how to make uh, coherent works. Interestingly. So, anyways, let's continue here. Uh, thank you, uh, Unknown Collector. Uh, interesting provocation there. And actually, after I read everything, I tended to agree with most of it. I would say just with digital art specifically, uh, that is kind of like, you know, created, you know, I think you can get lucky. It was sort of the moral of the story. Uh, Wonder Mundo. Uh, is Tezos officially dead? Are you still minting there? So I'd say clearly not. Uh, as you're going to see here in this episode. And a uh, great Tezos artist, Human Boy. So here we are at 820,000. Now, I reloaded this just before the show, so I'd get the latest number. Let's see if we can reload again, just to show you, yeah, 15,000 more in, I guess, the last 30 minutes. So that's how fast. So it looks like we're closing in on a million and a similar dynamic, or we might say uh, a similar kind of work to what we saw before with Human Boy, and remember it looked like x-rays and skulls, and then it was like a fast juxtaposition of different images. This seems to be the formula. And it's interesting because in crypto art, you know, I think Sabato has commented like, oh, if I just make it flashing, people will like it, this sort of thing. Uh, and this is interesting because it's, it is kind of flashing, but it's actually more than flashing. It's actually different images juxtaposed. And so uh, just very interesting. So again, now you could argue Human Boy got lucky the first time, right? Who's right? But then uh, two days later, here's Human Boy again, and then almost 3Xing the previous high. Uh, so uh, nice, and it looks great. So very cool. Uh, so congratulations to Human Boy. We will continue to follow this closely. Drive, so another work. So here's a still work by Human Boy, and it does look like some AI in this. 
um, as and also in the uh, in the interface here. So big congrats, and it just goes to show. So see here, you know, six thousand views. So you just keep kind of throwing darts, and then all of a sudden you hit the bullseye, and boom. And look, Human Boy. When we checked last time, Human Boy was at something like twenty five hundred followers. Human Boy has picked up like two thousand followers in like two days. So uh, just awesome. And, you know, even the show, like, thank you, Human Boy, for, you know, posting this on your page. Because I was seeing, like, even the show, finally, uh, maybe I got rid of that. The show had something like 17,000 views, which is pretty good. Uh, so all to say, and then we should get, uh, I th yeah, 18, I think it's because it's on Human Boy's page. And generally it tends to get, like, maybe 15 or 14, but this is pretty good. Uh, this far into it, uh, you know, so who knows, uh, all to say, uh, thank you, human boy and big congratulations. Go young. So we saw the work and it turned out it was going to be, uh, so we saw a few of the works by go young, uh, earlier this week. I think it was official announcement. My first open edition nap is open. So this is a nap is 0 0.04 ETH. So what is that? Maybe a, is that $150 maybe on base? This is available to collect until May 16th at 1 p.m. So you got to get it in the next few hours here. Link below. Uh, thank you everybody for who congratula congratulated me on my first open edition. I didn't expect so many people to reach out and everything. So again, just a beautiful work here. So available on Manifold and 70 minted. So 70 times 0.4. Uh, what is that? 10 would be 0.4. So yeah, 2.8 ETH. I mean, so what is that? Like $8,000 more? Uh, so here it is on Manifold, right? Interestingly. Let's continue. Cider. Uh, so here's the translation from Portuguese by Google. Guess who did this? And so here... Let's check it out. Translate post. Cover of Brazilian album released in 2024 that artists crumpled. So I think uh, Cider here, this seems pretty clearly to be a Cider or someone influenced by Cider. This looks like a Cider, doesn't it? So how cool is that? Doing album covers. Uh, so congrats, uh, I think, to Cider. Uh, looks nice album cover. Very cool. And here's Demon Ego, I think, also working on an album cover. And this looked like elements from that uh, album cover we're seeing. So how cool is that? So, and again, someone was saying here, uh, this sort of dithered work could be very interesting on BTC. Yeah, so fees are low. Uh, now's your chance, Demon Ego. Leprochant, I made the largest, I made the largest woodcut in the world with a wooden spoon and a set of gouges. It's possible. It took me more than a month. Now I have it lying in the garage, but it is cute. Unfortunately, it's kind of a dark picture. I'm not sure why. Uh, but pretty cool. I don't know if he actually used a wooden spoon, um, but maybe. Uh, so anyways, massive woodcut. I wonder how you transfer that. Or like, is this the work? Unfortunately, it's so dark. We can't tell if this is the result of the woodcut or the woodcut itself, if you follow me. Is this the print or is this the woodcut that you'd press the paper on? Uh, or canvas, maybe, in this case. This is massive. Anyways, very interesting, uh, Leprechant. Very cool. Here's Acid Boy in the studio. And so it begins. So a studio, uh, this is what Acid Boy's studio looks like. Uh, I assume envelopes and everything looks like, it almost looks like modular synthesizers here. El Ocot. So Ocot continues to do very well uh, here. So now in this magazine, look at Ocot's rise here in just a matter of like two or three months. Uh, it's a great honor for me to have my art featured in the latest issue of Uno en Sarriergo on artificial intelligence with Revista Unam text, which I share below. So how cool is that? And you can see it here. I mean, very nice. Uh, so Ocot. Before you know it, Okot's going to be having museum shows here. Uh, so just very cool. Uh, it's a true honor to have my art reviewed. This is on X in the most recent issue of UNAM magazine. Uh, thank you, Union Zariego, for your text. Uh, and so very cool. So congrats again to Okot, who is now, you know, there's something to be said for having your work in a book, right? I mean, it just makes it look more important uh, and everything. So it's just great. 
uh, PR, you know, get your work uh, published somehow. I have a friend, for example, my friend Bob, he's a photographer. He got these little books made of his photos and then he'll just like, he has five of them and he's just like, if people want to know, he's just like, here you go, 10 pages. It's kind of cool. Uh, so all to say there's something for seeing it in print. It's like, it's kind of the equivalent of if you, see, if you read it, you kind of think it's truer because you read it because it's something that's published, there's, it kind of creates a, an epistemological bias, is what I'd be tempted to call that. Epistemology, for those that don't know, I assume most of you know, uh, theory of knowledge, how we know what we know. Uh, so uh, knowledge bias, you tend to think it's realer than it is, just than it might be just because it's published. More of these kind of beautiful mech.txt uh, experiments. Who did this one? Bosque Grazius, helping mech to restore the garden. <laughs> Awesome. So it almost looks like a video game. My new masterpiece, Feeding the Birds. And so this is Retro Manny, so also using Mech's uh, tool. These are beautiful. Shall we go? Wait, yes. So all very cool. Now here's a masterpiece. Another masterpiece by Nov1914. Probably sold for a song. Could have added a zero on this one, if you ask me. Uh, Ten Tezos uh, for this gorgeous uh, work here. This brilliant uh, work, as you see the different trees, render and this person, you know, it seems like a woman in, you know, picking flowers maybe, and look at the fields. Uh, again, it's tempted to call this a, a masterpiece here. This is beautiful. This is uh, powerful. This is important. Uh, this is significant at the end of the day. It's all about significance over here. For me, uh, look at these beautiful flowers. The fun, the experimentation, and this is again the value of being prolific. Where all of a sudden, like this was minted on the same day as this work. These interiors are incredibly powerful. Arpa, so I assume that means harp. And there's the cat, uh, kind of an interior here with the fireplace. Two brilliant uh, works of art here. Totally original sophisticated, almost what I'd call mature work with all of the work that uh, Nov1914 is putting out, only 10 Tezos. So, you know, it, there, if you sell it for this price, you will always sell your work if you're making works like this. So beautiful work. Uh, we're going to look at that Sky Goodman later. Uh, Martin Bruce, uh, check out this work here. Uh, quite interesting as ever. Speaking of, almost kind of a kind of reminiscent, you see a kind of similar dynamic to the fields there. I mean, not totally, but and then these beautiful uh, what look like sampled brushes here, but there seems to be a physicality to it. Just really cool experimentation here from Martin Bruce. Uh, just again, kind of head turning. And here we've seen this work a couple of times, but we never saw it actually. Uh, minted and everything. So this is Rinny Fish, Fungal Fantasyland. And I think there should be some, usually there's audio. There we go. And I think you can see the fungus over top there. So just really, again, mature artwork from Rinny Fish. It's a really great thing when artists just keep going and keep going and keep going and then, you know, you start getting works like we're looking at here. Uh, Uxine with just a cool gif, kind of looks like a crop perhaps of another, maybe the Apple Real Vision Pro being referenced here, some tablets with some drawn pixels on it. Uh, just interesting piece, interesting color. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, Marcelo Pinel. Uh, Pelican, this part of Bestiary series, uh, 23 creatures based on main medieval bestiaries. Kind of has a bit of a, kind of reminiscent of, uh, there is kind of a Greek mythology kind of feel to this, but this is medieval bestiary. Okay, interesting. And look at that, kind of medieval creatures is what this looks like. Very cool work. So, yeah, a modern version of these medieval creatures, courtesy of Marcelo Pinel. Brilliant. And here is Mumble Boy. 
Another very early digital collage using the symmetry trick and also using some of the same elements. This is quite beautiful, I thought. I love the crossword uh, puzzle here, uh, in here, and it just, there's something quite beautiful, again, about this artwork. And it does, I wonder if this is all physical. But if it is all physical, then how did this blue get so flat? Is that blue paper this is on? What is the size of this work? Uh, so anyway, interesting work by Bumble Boy. One sold to Guru Guru Hyena for Tezos. Nice piece. Here is Wasteman Gold Minovich, no good clown. So uh, here the burger is on the head. The clown is looking, it almost looks like a German you know, expressionist painting from like the 1910s or 20s. Uh, and interesting, the tattoo of the kind of the, what you use, the burger flipper. And I don't see the McDonald's on the cigarette. Uh, so maybe a different brand of cigarettes here, but uh, kind of sad clown, uh, no good clown. Uh, so 75 Tezos on object. Another interesting provocative work here by Turkarak secretary. So here, the lecherous boss looking over at the secretary pouring the coffee, kind of a classic Turkarak work looking at more just the edgier side, shall we say, of human nature. Nice kind of, you know, this is a newer, I'd say the last like six months kind of style here for Turkarak. It, you know, just these kind of rougher, uh, kind of painterly like, uh, elements, I'd say it's like continues to come in, it continues to mature, shall we say. It continues to come into its own, uh, this whole kind of textured uh, process. So, uh, interesting piece, uh, as usual. Only 15 Tezos, edition of one. Looks like it might have been burned. Uh, it's continuing on. Ewi with another really interesting drawing. GM with three sons in one in you from the collection Three Sons. So this might be from an older piece. Kind of like how it almost loosely evokes sheet music a little bit. A nice surreal uh, illustration uh, here. And here's another one by Santiago Ruao, inspired by the, surreal, by the surreal app logo. Interesting. Quite a beautiful work. Square. There's something to be said for square uh, works. Uh, quite beautiful. Isn't it? Great, great color, nice composition, uh, and so eight minted so far, and this is available on Zora. Here is Katarina Create, Blooming Creation number 12, and this sold for 15 Tezos, a one of one. And so cool summer vibes from Katarina Create, and here just cool uh, kind of figure here with white hair, some butterflies, warm colors, just fun. Blooming Creation. Number 12, and here's Wozo with a kind of a rarer, I think this is, yeah, this is brand new, El Pescador, keeping us guessing over here, <laughs> keeping everybody guessing. Zozo uh, with a still uh, work, a illustration. So pretty interesting, kind of someone fishing maybe. And this is an edition of one for 21 Tezo, still available. If you want a canvas from Zozo, you can still get it. Oh my God, I drawed it. OMG, I drawed it, The Last Artist. Uh, so the intelligence was artificial, but that didn't stop it from holding a grudge. So maybe a commentary on AI. Edition of 30. Now 51 Tezos, I think, on secondary. And here is the last artist. Pretty rad, uh, fun artwork here with the person painting on a screen, seemingly. And these robots here. Kind of looks like Magnus Robot Fighter. Uh, and so, wow, these are 51 Tezos on primary. Incredible. Uh, two left. So OMG, I drawed it. I think a pretty uh, old school. Let's look at the here and now collection. We haven't actually looked at that. Uh, so here, this was, I think I have this. Palestine is a sunbathing, sunbird. So we have that. Yeah, so all sorts of work. I didn't realize it was such a big show. We saw the Santiago work. I think we might have seen the Semha work, Simulacro. So check it out. There's an Uck scene there. Oh, so here's the full uh, engagement. Farming cubicle number 27, edition of 33, and accepting offers of 33. So he, this looks like that work, doesn't it? That we're just looking at. So here's the full canvas. Uh, very cool uh, from Uxine. Look at how beautifully painted that is. And this interesting green. The color continues to creep in to Uxine's work. Uh, just great. 
Uh, 158 Tezos on secondary. And here's another one by Lejo X, who I'm sure I follow. Let's make sure, because if not, I will follow. Now, I do follow Lejo X. Okay, excellent. So just a cool snake here with some uh, geometry in the background. Uh, cool work. And here is Sebasto Sestaro with more with more uh, tennis work. So we're looking at this one. I hadn't seen this, so here are the two others from this series. Just very cool and fun. Interesting how it blurs out a little bit. And here's another one with a tennis ball blurred out. Like, what a composition. What a radical, fun, imaginative composition. And just look at the color. And this neon green. You know, not yellow green, but neon just like green against the purple. Uh, very interesting work uh, and great series, uh, you know, to UC's point, seeing them all together does kind of make them feel even more precious, perhaps, because the thing with seeing things in a series is you see the consistency and you see things that all of a sudden things that you think, oh, maybe that's just getting lucky. And you see, oh, it's not getting lucky because you see it in the series, a consistency. So to UC's point, to be fair, uh, Babes by Petra Voice. Interesting work here. Interesting, just kind of, again, uh, kind of these uh, sharp contrasts here with these kind of fuzzy, you know, contrasts in the background, almost like depth of field, but different, right? Kind of painterly. Uh, interesting. Petra voice and on Zora. Here's Denise Sanchez, levitating 300 DPI. So I couldn't tell, and I brought it up actually large here. I think this is, I thought this was a digital artwork. It's actually from March, but hard to say. It could be both. It could be physical uh, with digital effects. Uh, anyway, interesting uh, abstract here from Denise Sanchez. Uh, levitating, uh, 300 DPI, five minted so far, and you can still get it on Zora. Uh, continuing on, uh, Ugo Digi, Analog Factory Zora number five. A nice smaller one. I like how uh, Ugo seems to have changed up the series. I haven't seen the other ones on Zora, but it seems to have changed up the series to a simpler version for Zora. How's it doing? 56 minted. That's pretty good. Uh, creator earnings 0 0.02. What is that? Like 60 bucks? Uh, not bad at all. Maybe more. 70 bucks. That's great. And just beautiful work uh, taking what looks like an element from those larger works on object. Seemingly. Cute Farm, this is Silva Uh Really nice, again, another really just interesting, it's got a nice pace to it. Uh, another interesting glitch rom from Silva Santuz. It's like, I think it's the rhythm as well as the color. Uh, these things are like kind of coming into their own. The timing, it's beautiful. And these little, the choice of screens, uh, edition of three. Oh, so this is an open edition, only a Tezos. And here is Glitchtown Arcade 18, also a Glitchron, but kind of square, right? So, which is kind of interesting. Also this flashing margin, very abstracted out here. I assume this is a Glitchron. Uh, it's even hard to tell, but it's about the right kind of feel. Uh, 18, uh, so very interesting piece here. Nice uh, abstract. Alex Fatemi. I've been embarking on learning more 3D. This is another dream I had that I was able to communicate through images. I'll most likely make this available for free on Arzora. So here, basically a straight up uh, abstract in the background with some actually cool cycling through it with a 3D image, uh, kind of creating an illusion of sorts, almost of space as a result in the background image. So just kind of cool, tempted to almost call it op art or abstract. Uh, a, a, a moving abstract. Uh, RJ, set. After Pierre Bernard's Le Chat Blanc. So RJ back on the scene with some interesting, kind of looks like a distorted, transformed cat to a certain degree. So interesting piece with the outline, kind of with this kind of flashing, moving area. Just interesting work, interesting composition. As you can see, the black goes all the way to here. You can see the black on black. So interesting negative space there. Here's another one, Kiss. So Gustav Klimt just taking a, looking like he's just taking, RJ's just taking pieces of these paintings and almost making them look silver. 
It's almost like glittery and silver, isn't it? Kiss. Edition of one for 25 Tezos. And here's Flint Pope with an interesting abstract here uh, that I found on X. So just interesting move here, interesting color, just interesting movement, interesting composition, kind of original here. This tickles my brain, exactly. Thank you, DeSalter, for the comment there. Francoise Gamma. Uh, let's see if, I don't think, yeah, there is no volume. Interesting, different kind of artworks we're finding from Francoise Gamma here. Right, so here's one. Let's see if this make this a little bigger. No. Nope. Uh, so here's one. Here's another. So you gotta love when Francoise Gamma starts going uh, or discovers something new. We'll do like a million different experiments with, uh, you know, really explore, say, a new software, a new technique, a new process, and you see it here. Uh, really interesting. Pretty original. Like I don't know how. I assume this is. Uh, if I had to guess, this is effects on effects, but not sure. Uh, continuing on, speaking of no effects, this is Kiro, who does pure hardware glitch. Even this snow here at the bottom, this kind of, this is all, you know, quote unquote real. This is all like pure hardware glitch wrong, according to Kiro. How cool is that? Uh, so just very interesting piece here. Edition of one, only 333? Can I afford this? Edition of one? I will have to buy this immediately for 333. Is that a mistake? Another one, 420 edition of one. I love this piece. Maybe I'll buy this one. I think I have five tastes of Starluth. I love this piece. So Kiro is selling these works for very low prices, hardware glitch works. Uh, maybe I'll buy this one. This one I found quite poetic. I think we're ending the show with that one. Lume-ish, I think. Here we are again for the second time. So just interesting pixel art on uh, Instagram. I love the UPC code here. Nice touch. Uh, almost like a magazine cover. Here's Anis Abdin, DuckTales 2. So kind of a fun one. From Anis Abdin, beautiful pixel art, again, making a work a day. And just, again, you can, when you do this, I guess you can just make it go on infinite loop. Uh, beautiful. Beautiful, nice shadows there and everything. Uh, heartwarming work from Anis Abdin. Freedom Plotter, brain dead. Kind of a conceptual work here. Let's see if we can maximize. So, trying to figure this out. So, the egg in the cage, kind of, I think that's Magritte. Right. If I, as far as just immediate references, this looks like a scanner. This is—is is this a printer, or maybe that's a scanner too? Is this the Bible with a heart on it? Not sure. So kind of a mysterious one from Brain Dead Freedom Plotter. There must be an explanation somewhere. This is Forty Tezos edition of one. A really cool one from Lorna Mills. Gorgeous. Love the blue smoke and everything. Can we get closer? There we go. So kind of cut off here a little bit. Uh, so I'm not sure if this is new because uh, Lorna tends to go by color on Instagram. Uh, but nice piece. Really nice piece. Never seen this one. Love how the uh, how the mask goes around the smoke coming out of the car. Uh, very cool. And collected. Uh, so this is by DJ Kiro. So I'm not sure if this is a newer one. Uh, and uh, Rannick Steer picked this one up. Nice piece. So Kiro on a roll, uh, doing all sorts of... Again, when you just keep on putting out lots of work, like it goes somewhere. It doesn't take long, actually, for things to go somewhere. And then if you keep that up for months, it really starts to go somewhere. And then you have a pretty large body of work before you know it. So in Pasto Emperes, uh, here, another one, Dr. Version, edition of 33, kind of a wild... Almost a neurotic piece here with these cubes uh, around. Uh, glitchy, truly glitchy here. Grotesque Chic picking one up at three Tezos. Tenos, uh, this is by Renke, edition of one, not listed, as is usually the case. And again, bringing in these kind of, uh, these, uh, you know, pixelated renditions here, adding a little bit of pixelated texture, shall we say. Changing the color to black and white, or gray and white and black, 
Acid Boy. So we saw Acid Boy in the studio before. Maybe this is what happens when you connect all of those little devices there. So some studio experiments seemingly flow stuff uh, from Acid Boy. Pretty rad. So I assume this is all programming, I think. Spiegel's Maskin and Auction is Live for Ralph One of One. Uh, wild work here by Spiegel's. Uh, kind of has a bit of a RoboCop kind of feel to it. Maybe this is RoboCop. Uh, wow. Does it say? No, there is. Uh, yeah, so not sure. Kind of has a, uh, again, a bit of a RoboCop feel to it. Here's another one by Spiegel's and El, El Agua Profunda. El Aguas Profunda. Becoming Ralph is a new long play narrative by Spiegel's Maskinen with music by El Aguas Profunda, who plays the role of Jack Waterman in the series. And here is the work. Uh, so interesting, uh, ambitious, uh, a, a new long play narrative by Spiegel's Meskinen with music. Uh, so how cool is that? Uh, interesting, interesting, interesting. Here is uh, St- Stephen. Uh, uh, is it? I want to say Daedalus, but that's Ulysses. Uh, but I think it starts with a D. Deni- not Denirus. It's not here. Uh, but Stephen, we all recognize this artist. And there's the enjoy. Uh, and here is the work. Bake Simulation Enjoy Tech. Uh, so maybe if you do a search on Stephen with a V, uh, you will find this work. Uh, 32 minted so far. And there is the enjoy. Maybe this is bringing in the enjoy coin. Not sure what that's worth. Uh, the enjoy coin. Windows 2002. Song Snowpoint Lounge Galactic Lab. Infiltration. Kind of a cool work here, isn't it? Uh, especially with the eye. Uh, a little bit of humor here. And different variations, interestingly. And here's the still work, uh, interestingly. And uh, your hardware is soulless. Greek statue. Kind of has a net art feel to it. Here's a machine with just uh, pretty interesting uh, work. More Japan kind of playing off of uh, what's the dinosaur called in Japanese... Uh, in Japanese, okay, so here's just the trip. Uh, but interesting, kind of looks like AI. Uh, I can't remember what you call the dinosaur in Japanese sci-fi, but very famous. It's not King Kong, it's the dinosaur. Let's continue. Sky Goodman, my newest work, City of Sentience, will be exhibited in LA today as part of the Artificial Perspective Show. Uh, art and music and musings about the state of AI, the good and the bad of it. So it's interesting. Uh, AI, you know, I feel like we're at a point where it's, we've seen a ton of AI art come out the last two years, and now it's kind of an interesting time to kind of just think on what it, where we're at and where it's going. Again, I point you to the uh, Clown Vamp show. Cool work uh, from Sky Goodman, probably using several different, uh, not just AI, but also uh, different softwares there. And you probably recognize this artist, Skamra. Love that. Is that a gray line at the top? Interesting. And I love that bottom area here too. That might be Twitter, that gray line. Uh, And here, just nice texture. Pretty interesting work. I think AI artwork. So beautiful work from Skamra, beautiful trees. We saw this the other day, but just so you know, it's available on auction on object now. It has been minted. It's a beautiful work. Uh, You know, this would be good in Berlin. There's the Berlin Bear is really the city's kind of mascot. Uh, stable diffusion and different textual invert and diffusers textual inversion edition of one now it's seven tezos uh, Santiago putting the bid on beautiful work and here's Lily Illo good morning interesting so here a double face interestingly from Lily Illo so and then the hair is one color on one side and one color on the other interesting piece nice textured background kind of painterly uh, from Lily Illo, as we go into the physicals, it's not a gallery. Jerry A.J., not sure what the reference is here, but I just think it's interesting. Kind of reminds me, there's also a artist that paints memes who's quite popular, Christina. Christina, someone I'm sure someone out there knows. Kind of reminds me of that artist, but tends to be an acrylic Christina. Uh, I can't remember her last name. Uh, kind of has a similar vibe. Jerry A.J., This here is Psycho... Udini, Contemporary Young People. I love the title. 
contemporary young people looking on at an atomic explosion. Maybe they're being vaporized, maybe in another way. Uh, acrylic on canvas, 100 by 81. And if being broke was a job, this is also It's Not Gallery, Megan Dominescu. I'd say It's Not Gallery. It's you know I've probably shown this gallery more than any other by far uh, in the physical artwork section. There, this gallery is important. You know, to state the obvious, I would argue, clearly, because I keep showing their works, uh, kind of paradigm-creating gallery here. Like, the, you know, deserves a lot of credit. How many followers? Only, I guess, 47,000. Those are probably all real followers, though, unlike some of the galleries that you might find that are more famous, or, you know, larger. So that's probably all organic. I wish we could... 611 likes, but that's not bad on Instagram. Uh, anyways, if being broke was a job, so kind of a humorous work, interesting textures. Here's Blair Saxon Hill, uh, Fear, Pain, and Worry. Uh, interesting painting here. So there's a ton of interesting painting coming out right now. Here's X Hunt Soul X, Escape. Uh, it, so Instagram has become truly a brilliant tool for discovering uh, physical artwork. I'd argue better than going to an art fair. Like if I was a hardcore physical collector, First, I'd bring up Walk's eBay. I'd bookmark that page, Walk's eBay page. Uh, and then I'd probably go on Instagram and I'd start looking for artists like this. You know, the new artists out there that you can probably get the works for a few hundred dollars, maybe a couple of thousand, like we saw with that Kayla Mattis work. That early important Kayla Mattis work looking at, it was something at like two or three thousand dollars or expected, you know, which is a lot of money, but compared to what people are spending, for contemporary, you know, half a million dollars for other contemporary art, uh, you see where the opportunities maybe are. Taylor A. White, coming soon to Taipei Dang Dai. Uh, another interesting artist here, bold. Uh, you see the humor. I call it the new humor. Uh, and a beautiful work by Bondoso Bandido, uh, I think Hermes Enrique, if I'm not mistaken, uh, just in the studio. And you see the airbrush working fast. Love this, how this almost video game-like path turns into the flute player. Uh, really just a really cool artist. I love the whimsicality and actually the courage act at the end of the day of this artist. And a really nice piece by Adam Lister uh, playing out after Basquiat. So after Basquiat's famous skull, uh, very cool uh, execution here. Nice piece. And of course, walk with another, this looks like a self-portrait. Uh, another powerful, powerful, powerful Iconic, tempting to call it, self-portrait by Walk, which is what we end the show with. Thank you for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I hope you make a bunch of great art. Bitcoin fees are low, so are Ethereum. Take advantage. Don't tell anyone but your artist friends. Thank you. Until next time, take care.